So, in this video, we're going to talk about the first approach to handling deadlocks. And this one is deadlock prevention. Uh, the idea here is uh, for a deadlock to happen, we know that there must be the conditions, the four conditions must be satisfied uh, for a deadlock to happen. So in deadlock prevention, the main, the main approach is to prevent at least one of the conditions from uh, happening. So uh, in the case of the first condition, which is mutual exclusion, which tells us that uh, in the system, the resources, when, uh, when, uh, when a process is using a resource, then that process has exclusive access to that resource. Uh, to prevent that, you allow the resources to be shared. However, uh, that's not always possible because some resources are intrinsically not shareable like uh, locks for example that's why you're trying to obtain a lock because you want to get exclusive access of the lock but for some resources like read-only files then they can be shared but the important thing to remember is that you cannot always prevent or violate mutual exclusion because some resources are intrinsically not shareable. Now, for the second condition, how do we violate the second condition? Uh, what we need to do there is we need to guarantee that uh, when a resource is requesting for uh, when a process is requesting for a resource it is not holding uh, any other resource okay so because the idea of, of hold and wait is that a process is already holding a resource and it needs another resource so it's requesting for this another resource so to prevent uh, hold or to violate hold and wait make sure that uh, when a request or uh, when a process request for a resource is not holding any other uh, resources uh, there are two ways to do this to violate this condition the first one is since uh, you don't want uh, the process requesting a resource despite it having a resource you make sure that at, before the process starts, uh, it is allocated all the resources that it needs. That means, uh, for example, if uh, a text editor process will need access to the disk resource or and the printer resource and the screen resource, so. Uh, the text editor process will need access to disk, screen, and printer. Before the text editor process starts, it must have, or it must have all these three resources before it begins execution, and until it completes its task, the text editor process. Another option is. Uh, to allow process to request resources only when the process has not allocated to it. So, uh, going back to the text editor process, uh, when the text editor process is running, it's not using, it's not allocated any resource. But when it requests for a resource, for resources, like the, the three mentioned a while ago, disk, screen, and printer, it will request for the text editor process will request for these three resources at the same time so that's what we mean by hold and wait and the implication of violating hold and wait the hold and wait condition is low resource utilization because uh, 
if you don't allow the if you don't allow a process to request while uh, it does uh, it holds uh, it does not hold an other resources then some resources will not be uh, utilized okay, so that's uh, the implication of violating hold and wait and it's also possible that uh, some processes will be starved of the resources that uh, they need now for the third for violating the third condition which is no pre preemption again the idea of uh, no preemption is uh, it is the process holding the resource that voluntarily releases the resource so remember our uh, use uh, use model so request use and then release okay so to violate no preemption uh, it says that if a process that is holding some resources requests another resource that cannot be immediately allocated to it then all resources currently being held are released so going back to the text editor example let's say the text editor has access to or is using the disk and the screen now it tries to request for a printer but a printer is not yet available so to violate no preemption the disk resource and the screen resource that is currently that are currently uh, being used by the text editor process must be released immediately and uh, these preempted resources the disk and the screen are added to the waiting list of resources for which uh, the process who release it is waiting and then when all of the resources are available uh, at the same time meaning the text editor process can get hold of the three resources it needs then uh, that process will be uh, restarted and uh, the old resources which was released from it okay, uh, and the new resources say the printer will be uh, given now to the text editor process so that is essentially how to violate no preemption now to violate the last one to violate the circular weight condition uh, the idea is to impose a total ordering of all resources resource types and make sure that uh, the process will request the resources in <coughs> increasing order of enumerate what, what does that mean so what you do here to violate circular weight is to assign a number to the resource types for example uh, so you uh, assign a number let's say 2 to disk and then you assign 4 to screen and then you assign 9 to printer so what happens in this in violating circular weight is that the text editor process cannot request for uh, the printer because initial uh, the text editor process cannot initially request for the printer resource because its number is number nine the assigned number to it is 9 uh, the text editor process must request first uh, the resource with the lower number which is the disk 
it's because uh, it was assigned uh, the number four so that will be the process of uh, obtaining or requesting for the resource so you start with the uh, lower rank so in a way you're ranking the resources so you start with the lower rank resource requesting for the lower rank resource first and then you move on to the next uh, rank resource and then you have uh, the last uh, uh, the highest rank resource finally okay so here this is an example of a deadlock uh, this was presented earlier and uh, one of the things to remember about deadlock prevention uh, is that uh, again again about uh, violating the circular weight condition is that despite you uh, place uh, lock ordering okay, or ordering or ranking of the resources it's still possible uh, to have deadlocks in the example shown here because the locks are dynamically obtained and basically when you have when you obtain the locks dynamically then uh, at some point there will be uh, certain delays and that can actually still cause a deadlock okay so